Josh. Okay, well, the buoy's not there anymore. Yeah, so don't blame me. I'm not the one that ripped it off. I know, but you, you can't generalize people like you because I wouldn't have hit it. I would not have hit that if I saw it. I know, so don't generalize bass fishermen as a whole. You can't do that. Well, good grief, I've got a feeling today it's gonna be stinking fun. Let's get it. How's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. I love this series called Uncut because it's exactly what the name implies. It is fishing, uncut, relatively unedited. We're gonna catch a lot of fish, I have a feeling. I'm not gonna promise, but that's the feeling I have. This video is brought to you by AFCO Clothing, the clothes that I've worn here on this channel for the past five plus years. More about AFCO and what they do after the first fish catch. So let's stop talking and get to the fishing. I hope to catch them in multiple different styles today. So skipping docks, fishing lily pads with a frog. But I think the number one way we're gonna catch them is going to be on docks. So I'm here in Minnesota right now, central Minnesota. The fish love docks in Minnesota in the summer. I know in Texas and in the south, the water's way too hot. The fish are not up shallow. There's not really enough oxygen for them up shallow. Here in the north, there is. And so one of the most consistent ways to catch them is on docks. And my favorite way to do it is by skipping the old outcast cage fighter jig around the docks. And that was a horrible skip. That was absolutely horrendous. Not the way you want to start. You're going to see way better skips than that. <laughs> Like that one. There you go. But you know what? That's the beauty of the uncut is that all of my failures are out in the open as well for y'all to see. So, cheers. Uh, conditions we've got today. Water is 74, which I would say is a little bit warm for Minnesota, but not like super hot. Uh, the bass are feeding on bluegill, as they all happen to do in Minnesota for most of the summer. And I think in the fall time, they might branch out a little more and start eating bait fish and, and crayfish and stuff. But I think for the most part, these are bluegill eaters and that's why they're on the docks because the docks provide cover for the bluegill. The docks provide food. And Tyler Anderson, you stink and stink at flipping docks right now. My groove will get here. I will get considerably better as the video progresses. There we go. It's like I have a horrible one and then an amazing one. Oh gosh, that was a fish, I think. I think I had a fish. There he is, there he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I knew it. -hee -hee. Wow, that was fun. That guy did some acrobats, acrobatic moves. Not a giant, but a fun little guy to start on. One of the things I love about northern strain bass is that their proportions are just, they're just right. It looks like how a bass should look. Heck yeah. Y'all, I think we're gonna catch quite a few fish today. I'm pumped. And again, I love these videos because I just get to go fishing. So now that we've caught our first. You can fish my dock anytime. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, or my pontoon. Glad you got something. Yes, sir, appreciate it. Have a good one. Anytime, I like to see people catch fish. Good, I appreciate dock owners like you. We'll talk more about him after we talk about AFCO clothing. So every true fisherman should understand the value of good fishing clothing, whether it's your sun shirt, whether it's your hat, your buff, or your rain gear. And AFCO, in my opinion, makes some of the best stuff out there. So whether you need SPF sun shirts like this Yuri right here, the Barracuda Geo Cool, the Samurai, so many awesome sun shirts. Or if you are a hardcore bass angler and you want to be out there, rain, sleet, snow, or hail, their rain gear is amazing. So if you or somebody you know is sick and tired of being uncomfortable on the water or getting sunburned out there, they need to try AFCO. And I I have a discount code. TRF2022 saves you guys 15% on your entire AFCO order. Make sure you guys check it out linked in the video description. The only reason why I can have this right here as my job is because of you guys and the awesome sponsors that I work with. So if you guys want to support me, buy your clothing from AFCO using my link down there. So enough of that. Let's get back on the water and catch some fish. So it is very, very rare to have a dock owner that's, that's that gung-ho about letting people catch fish. I mean, he told me, I hope y'all could hear that. He was like, hey, fish my dock anytime, fish my pontoon boat anytime. And that is just uh, a breath of fresh air in the 
in the homeowner community. So props to that guy. That's the, you know, dock owner that I hope to be one day if I'm a dock owner. I'd love to have signs out that say, fish my dock. There are brush piles here. <laughs> That'd be uh, the dock owner I hope to be. But, gosh, dang it. That fish was trying to lose my jig. Oh my goodness, that was wild. I wonder if I can catch him again. I hadn't even set the hook yet and he was jumping. That's crazy. Weird. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give that a flip in there. Uh-oh, if I get a bite, I'm in trouble. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that last guy... Oh, he only took one of my claws. So we're good. If I've got at least one claw on my trailer, I'll keep fishing it. But if I... If I drop down to zero claws, I'll get a new one. That's kind of my rule of thumb. Or uh, should I say, my rule of claw. Are we a little too bright on the light? Oh, we're okay. Not the best, but we're okay. Oh, beautiful. A beautiful skip right there. And you'll notice that I'm skipping all of these areas between the docks, so all this grass and pads here it's just too shallow and minnesota fish to me seem to be on the the docks that have nothing under them so the, the clean i call them clean docks because the bottom composition under the dock is is open water that's just what i've figured out over the years and so if they have all this grass around them and then a clear dock or a clean dock they're going to be underneath the clean dock that's why i'm skipping fishing all this stuff here. I'm probably missing a fish every once in a while by skipping all this, but it's fine by me. Can't be missing that much. <laughs> I love skipping ducks. I love it a lot. Give me a doctor skip and I'm a happy boy. Who keeps texting me? I don't want to deal with these text messages. Hey, if you want to see a video of me teaching you guys how to skip lures, I will leave that linked in the video description below. Just like that, baby. what you call the bada bing and the bada boom. <laughs> See, I just, a lot of these docks here have grass underneath them. And that's not going to be where the majority of your fish are. Holy cow. Holy cow. That's a big one. That's a big one. Let's power pull down. Holy cow. That's a nice one. Oh my gosh. That's a big one. Like for Minnesota, this is a big fish. This is a big fish right here. Chill out. Chill, buddy. We're gonna take you over here and do the old scoop and score. We're gonna do the old scoop and score. Holy cow, you're nice. You're nice. You're a nice one. You're a nice one. Get in my hand. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a way to start the uncut here. Hoo hoo hoo. A little dinker. And then a chonker. Look at how he ate that cage fighter jig right there. My gosh. Oh man, what a beautiful fish. Beautiful quality. Can't even tell you guys how much I love these fish. I'm gonna get a weight on this fish and then let her go. 3.83. I was just off. Absolutely beautiful fish right here. Heck yeah. This is gonna be a fun day. Subscribe if you're not yet. Thank you, friend. See ya. I could have sworn when I set the hook there and saw the fish that she was, you know, four. But she's not. All right, 383. Gotta, you know, keep track of our five. That'll probably be around, you know, 15, 16 pounds. If we already got a 3.8, that's a really good start. Let's go, baby. Any more fish in there? That'd be dope. There was two. See, underneath this dock here, because this boat has washed this area out, there are quite a few, there's not quite a few, there's a, there was a bass underneath. 
And I think these folks over here are waiting for me to leave their premises. Pardon me? I did catch a big one, yeah. It was a bass. Oh. Point. Was that your pet? Well, I'll let him go, so he'll he'll uh his mouth will recover and then he'll be back again. You too. All right, well, I'm not gonna make any any uh, any bets, but if I was to make a bet, it would be that a lot of the fish today we catch on docks are gonna be underneath the actual like underneath the actual boat and not underneath the dock itself. That's just what I'm willing to wager. Judging by how much grass, and I mean, it's, it's good grass too, it's not all bad grass. Um, judging by how much we have under these docks this year, there's definitely a different amount every year. I tell you something though, there's, there's not many things in this world like lifting your lure up, let it fall back down as it's fallen. Dunk. That's exciting. That gets me going in the morning. <sighs> it's almost time for a new trailer. I lost my super glue bottle. So I can't super glue my trailers today, which definitely stinks. Ah, bad skip. You know what? I'm just gonna redo that one. Ah, every single cast I gotta redo the trailer. After this dock here, we've got a good portion of stuff I'm not fishing. Oh my gosh, Tyler, get your stinking lure. No, you stink. My jig's all messed up. There we go. Wasn't a lure there anyways. Okay, I'm gonna turn the trolling motor on, constant, and that way. Crank it up to 10. Get ourselves a new trailer. Put them over here. Hope y'all are enjoying so far. Again, I can't thank AFCO enough. I love the brand, I love the people. They've never done me wrong, and I don't believe they'll do you wrong either. I also hardly ever get sunburned. So there's also that. If you're a mother out there and you're looking to buy fishing clothing or a gift for your son or your husband, and you're worried about them getting sunburned, just get them a nice stick of face sunscreen and an AFCO Yuri Aramash that I'm wearing, and they'll be good to go. All right. I guess I might as well Flip some of this grass while I troll fast. That rhymed. Flip some of grass while I troll fast. I just, I don't think flipping and punching this stuff is gonna be the key today. I've been wrong before, but don't see that as the key. There's definitely some good holes in the grass though. Uh oh. Came up on this dock here a little fast. Okay. Nothing there. This dock's too small anyways. I mean, not saying it can't have a fish, but too small to spend a bunch of time on. And it's definitely not clean bottom, so it's not worth our time. Pretty grass line here or there is. A buff in my hoodie need to go up. Because the praises go up. Lessons come down. 
Oof. That'll get a boy excited. Gosh, I am, I am stuck on a screw. Oh, there we go. Got him. Got him. Are you big? You're a nice one. I gotta feel my line as I reel him in because I, gosh, what a nice one. What a nice one. My goodness, another one. Another stinking nice one. Cause my line was uh, pulling against a cable the whole time. Get in here, get in here. Get in here, yes sir, yes sir. Look at that, look at that. Big stinking large mouth, oh my gosh. On the jig, cannot beat it. I need to get an Instagram selfie real quick. That's the thing about uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok is that I can't do it all at once. So I gotta take some breaks here. This one will go three as well, 3.4 probably. Look at that, good guess, 3.3. On the dot. Cool. I don't know if y'all can see that when I show you, but I'm just showing you to prove that I'm not lying. 3.3 pounder. God, their proportions are so fun. I love it. I'm gonna get a release of this guy on Instagram as well. See you, buddy. I love you. I love you so much. I am not gonna complain about this. What I will do though is retie because I think I gotta check more than just the part of line near the lure. My line was grinding against this rusty screw for like a while. So I need to peel out line and then feel it as I reel in. It's totally possible that it's fine. I've just got doubts. May have to totally re-string my rod here. Right there. Tying the Palomar knot. I love Palomar. Big fan of Palomar. I just think it's the best knot out there for easy tying if you do it right in my opinion wet it down you'll uh you'll have a good palomar every time backhand skips are not my my favorites but i can do them all right let's restart this clip all right three fish so far in what 15 minutes i think it's been i'll take that I'll take those odds. You know what though, I also see a dock up here that looks like it should have a fish, it's just too much grass. So I'm gonna skip a frog. Well, maybe not. There we go. And I can see it through the, through the lattices. Okay. No fish. How about under that dock? I desperately want to catch one today. Skipping a dock with a frog, so bad. I may even force it. <laughs> if I see a really good looking dock, I may skip a frog in there first. Probably not the fastest way to catch a fish, but I would really, really like that. That would be more fun to me than the jig, probably. Also a little safer for everybody else's boat and my jig. Let's see if I can get one, a flip in this guy's slip here. Kind of doubt it. Ah, dang it. I can do it sideways probably. There we go. Ow, no. Okay, we're gonna go up and over. Oh, it's like these pontoons are the hardest to get a skip in. Because I can't I can't reach through the bottom. There's no room there. There's like half an inch between that and the water. So I've got to go through the top, but underneath the boat at the same time. And I keep stinking hitting the boat. Come on. Oh my gosh. I'm frustrated. I just want to catch a fish. Okay. Wasn't meant to be. Ooh. Back to the J, I guess. Uh oh. I just had a fish. 
and I had to not swing because it was right in front of a, a prop. I'm going to preemptively go in there. Okay, never mind. Grass. See if I can left handed flip. Nope. There we go. Ah, some of these docks are so shallow. It's almost impossible to get the skip I want. And I'm going back and forth between a 6.9 heavy and a 7.3 medium heavy. And the skipping form is just way different. Okay, we're gonna go first with a, a frog here. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's so much fun. I can't even tell you guys how much fun that is. You just gotta experience it for yourself. Man, when he exploded on him, I thought he was mucho grande. Ha 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 ha. That's cool. Let's go with two in a row, maybe? Oh, that's like... You hear the explosion, and you just, you just hope that he got it in his yapper. And that guy did. Oh my gosh. Ow. And now my line's all messed up from that hook set. No oh, man. Okay, we're done. Done with the frog. I'm not at the right angle. This dock to fish the frog. Man, that's fun. I'm totally doing the uh, the frog first on any dock with a lot of shade because I want to catch a big old big old stanker on a frog. And you will also notice that I'm going to work every area today in a clockwise fashion, left to right, because that's the way that I skip my jigs the best. And I can skip other ways. I can skip backhanded. I can flip skip, but I'm best at this. So, in order to catch the most fish in the least amount of tiempo possible, we're gonna go this direction. Does that make sense to me? Make sense to you? I hope so. Well, now that I'm frog fishing, I'm excited. I like catching them on a frog. On an F-R-A-W-G. How are we at lighting-wise? We look good. You're going to see me continue to come back and check lighting because I'm obsessed with getting it right. Giving you guys the best possible video. I want to catch like a 500 so bad. That's not the way to do it. But look at that. That class that I got is out and I'm ready to go again. Uh oh. That's not the best cast. Not the best dock. Too much weeds around this dock. And it's interesting, because of the time of the day, a lot of the shade is on the right side of these docks here. So that's gonna be where the majority of my bites should come is on the right side of the docks. 
because fish are on the docks because of the shade. So why would you be skipping and, and thinking you're going to get a bite on the sunny side? Fish will, fish will easily move around to different sections of the dock. And I need water. I need to drink an agua. I need to drink an agua bad. Frog first. Frog eats first. This is so much harder to skip a frog. Oh man. Maybe I need less spool fullness. I got a lot of 50 pound braid on here. Yeah, maybe I should tighten up my... How much brace do I got here? A little more brakes, a little more spool tension. I gotta clear my spool. And this next dock ain't got a whole lot of shade, so I'm just gonna effectively pick it apart with this since I'm good at that. Uh oh. I think I lost my claws on my trailer. Ugh. I lose a trailer once every stinking two fish, at least. Because I don't have a screw lock on my jig, we're designing one. Me and Outcast Tackle are hopefully designing a jig that's better for skipping. Or just get super glue for your bait keeper, of which I don't have any. Because I ran out. Gosh. Just found that out. What did? What busted off? There was a buoy there marking that rock. Okay, well, the buoy's not there anymore. Yeah, so don't blame me. I'm not the one that ripped it off. I know, but you, you can't generalize people like you because I wouldn't have hit it. I would not have hit that if I saw it. I know, so don't generalize bass fishermen as a whole. You can't do that. I will go away. I'm just telling you, you can't treat us all like that. It's okay. Oh my goodness. See, there's the there's the the polar opposite right there. That dock owner in the first one. I hit my engine on a boulder that was out there. I didn't know it was there. I guess there's a buoy that marks that boulder. He, the the dock owner up on the on this porch, couldn't tell if it was a guy or a girl, yells that it's because of people like me that tear the buoy off. I didn't tear the buoy off. I wouldn't have hit the buoy if I had seen it cuz who hits a buoy? And so I just had to stand up for bass anglers because I didn't do anything wrong. I'm fishing his dock. I didn't break nothing. And I hit a boulder that's in front of his dock. Had to stick up for my own. And I feel like I did that in a respect, respect, respectful way. Oh, man. All right, and boom, yes. That is definitely 14 inches. <laughs> you can uh, keep it away from my dock. Oh, I apologize, sir. I see you guys on TV do it all the time. I think you'd be a little more appreciative of us. I am very appreciative. I just caught a fish under your dock. I'm very appreciative. Then why'd you hit it? It was an accident. And I didn't... I, pros, pros don't make accidents. I'm not a pro. Kind of looks like you are to me. I'm, I, don't, I never claim to be a pro. I'm, I'm very appreciative of your fish, and I'm so sorry I hit your dock. Put that behind us. Let's catch a few fish. Beautiful skip. Oh gosh, I got bit. I got bit under there. It's either a bass or a bluegill. 
I'm willing to willing to guess. Oh, well, hold up. Oh, gosh, so small. Now, what I do when I think I have a small one is I flip the tube in there. Because the tube's hookup ratio seems to be very good. There we go. Huh. Or you just don't catch the fish at all. That's also an option. Nope. Oh my gosh. Stung stung him that time. Oh no. There's no way I catch him now. Yeah. He done. He done. There's one. Yes, sir. I think he's big. Yep, he's a nice one. He's a nice one. Man, the big ones are eating on the docks today. I stinking love it. Gosh. All right, bring it up in here. Yes, sir. Another nice one on the jig. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. So much stinking fun. Oh, I didn't weigh him. Man, well... He's probably, you know, two and a half pounds. He wasn't huge, but he was a nice one. And he also frayed my line. So I can probably retie one more time with this reel before I've got to actually totally re-spool because I fished, uh, I made a video before this one where I had to retie a few times. And now already on this video, I've had to retie twice, I think, so. The 40 yards that I have on here is now more like 25 yards, probably. <laughs> now nah, maybe maybe 30 yards. Either way, you want a full spool, whether it's a skinny spool or a fat spool. Beautiful, because I would never want to lose a fish on something that is my fault. Man, sometimes my skips like that are just gorgeous. And other times, they're just kind of mediocre. Love it. L-U-V-I-T. Lyle Lovett. He's a country artist, right? Lyle Lovett? Pretty sure. Alright, now this next dock here is going to be a challenge. Because... Oh, never mind. Well, yeah. Just a lot of grass in it. Let's just see if I can skip it nice and easy here. Love it. Cool. Got the skip. Now, when I'm, when I'm working a dock that's got, you know, more grass under it, I'm not doing a slow hop. I'm doing a really fast hop just because I need to get that grass, I'm mean, that grass, out of the, the jig up out of the grass, kind of like shake it off. And I mean, if there's a fish under there, he's going to eat it whether it's moving slow or moving fast. And I would, I would think that he eat it more if it had nothing on it, like no grass on it or anything. It's just my two cents there on frogs under or jigs under dogs. Oh gosh dang it. I got stuck. Braid is a stronger line but does have a tendency to like dig into things a lot easier. Got it. Whee. I'm going to try to get good at skipping a frog for these next few docks because it's really, really grassy in here. I just, I'm not good at it. The frog is so light. And it takes so much momentum to keep it going. <sighs> See if I can get a, a flip under these docks. I think what I need, what I need is a heavier frog. And this frog is just light. Oh yeah. 
Oh, that. See, that should be a fish right there. I guarantee you, under that pontoon is clean water. Yeah, as in, as in, no grass down there. That should be a bass. Man. Ooh. Let's see a really good looking little slip right there. Pardon me? Oh no, I'm not. It does. And I appreciate you for understanding. Gotcha, thank you. Because you have a neighbor that's not so appreciative. Yeah, the guy with the flag on his dock right there. A girl, I don't know who it is. It's okay. Oh, I know. Thank you. She said, legally I have every right. You're gosh dang right I do. Tyler, I've seen your videos. Well, hey, how you doing? Good. You know, as much as I like making videos, y'all look like you're having fun. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I don't get to cruise very often. I think I've actually met that guy before who says he's seen my videos. Ah, that skip. Pretty sure I've met him before out here. You know, the overwhelming majority of people out here are nice. Don't let the few sour duds ruin the experience for you. Okay, and speaking of ruining the experience, I don't think this area has many more good docks. It's getting shallow. We've got a bunch of weed beds and I'm not really feeling it. So we're gonna yank the old T-motor up, find ourselves some new dogs. Gotta clean off the head here so it doesn't come flying and hit you when you drive. Let's go. Put it in reverse to get some of the the grassy's off. And you know what? I hadn't even thought about how much time I should do this for. I'm gonna put uh, one hour and 30 minutes on the clock just so I can get back home and have a good dinner. Uh. Boom, baby. Let's catch us some more fish. How about that? Anybody against that? I know I'm not. Beautiful skip. Basically fishing the same type of stuff that we were just fishing. So docks with grass around them on a different bay, but still the north side. So the wind's blowing from the north. I'm on the north side, so the wind is not blowing into these docks. I would, I would prefer for them to not have grass blown into them. So like if we had a southern wind, you, I mean, you don't want to fish windy docks at all, but up here at least. I can't speak for spotted bass or largemouth. Down south. Gosh. Oh, nice one. Nice one. Nice one, nice one. What a chunk. This one looks like it's a healthy boy. Doesn't look huge, but is healthy. Got some cabbage. Some cabbage. And get in here. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful angel. Look at that. Stinking awesome. Again, though, just a two and a half pounder. Oh, and we're getting so close to having no line left. It's like every fish, you have to get your jig way in there and they get you all kinds of janky. This jig does lasted a while. Usually, you know, you go through a lot of trailers, but excuse me, you don't go through a lot of jigs unless you're like getting stuck, which I don't very often or breaking off, which I do frequently here on these docks. <laughs> And I still got one craw left, one craw trailer left, so I'm gonna keep using it. Again, that's my my litmus 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 test. No, my I don't even know what the term is I'm looking for. That's how I tell myself if I need a new J trailer. Have I lost both of my pictures? The answer is no. Stay with what you got.
And I really wish that I could catch them, you know, flipping this jig around these pads. It's just, it's not seeming to do anything. Oh gosh. <sighs> Why am I spot locking? I just got piked, by the way, if you're curious what happened there. <laughs> that's why I'm not fishing around the grass because that's where all the slimy pike are. So there's that. Gosh darn it. And I'm not even sure how many of these cage fighters I have left. I don't even think I have. I've got some in black and blue, but I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw a black and blue jig today. So, man. All right, I guess I'll throw a stealth fighter. Definitely not what I wanted, but that'll do, donkey. You know what? I don't even like these, cult, these uh, sizes that I got here. I come back here and look for my other jigs. Here we go, three eighths ounce stealth jigs. Stealth has a vertical line tie and the cage has a horizontal. So one is significantly better for um, wood and docks. The one with the horizontal line tie and the vertical is better for grass, but I think I'll do fine. I think I'll do fine with the, uh, with the, whatever it is, stealth fighter. Okay, after that debacle, I'd like to not do that again. Again, I don't think that was a bass because it didn't like pull hard and snap me off. It was just running and snap me off, which usually means it's a pike. And with how fast it was running, I wouldn't doubt it for one second if you told me I was a bike. This dock looks extra froggy though. Okay, nope, not gonna happen. Oh, not the tube. The jig. Man, that sun feels like it's getting hotter. If I'm being honest. Sun feels like it's getting hotter. One thing that can also hurt your dock skipping, which has just hurt me the last two casts, is stuff in front of the dock. I like to be able to skip along from, you know, far in front of the dock here all the way into it, which is my style. And you can't really when you got a whole bunch of grass in front of you because they slow your jig down. Yeah. Tell you what though, the stealth skips just as well. I guess it is the same head, same trailer. That would make sense. Got him. Got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get in here. Ain't got no time to let your energy get out. Hey. Thank you, friend. Man, this guy's blind. Look at that. He has got a cataract. He's got a Cadillac. And he wasn't getting off, that's for sure. Eesh. Thank you, friend. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Now, why can't I catch multiple bass out of a dock? Maybe it's not that time yet. I just know that I have had times throughout the years up here in Minnesota where I can catch like two to three fish on every dock. One time, I caught five, I think, off a dock one time. That was crazy.
Ooh, we got a cool, a cool dot coming up. I mean, physically and metaphorically. It's a dock that's got, uh, it's got water blowing out of a pipe. And they do that in order to get circulation around their dock so that vegetation, oh, look at that. <laughs> we were out. Can't make it cast that long. Uh, so vegetation can't grow in their swim area. And sometimes with moving water, these kind of docks can bring in a lot of fish. So I'm willing to bet right there I will catch one. Or not. I could be just totally wrong. Maybe maybe on the back side of it. Maybe a fish that's in, that's resting from the current. Yep. Knew it. Knew it. Knew it. Gosh. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Gee. He got me stuck as well, so I gotta check my line. Man, what a chunk. Ouch, he burned my finger. Line burned. That's what I get for trying to MLF them all. That's awesome. Stinking chunker. Who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love it? I, I do, definitely. I can tell you that. Oh man, look at the, look at the jig is gone. It's those kind of fish that no matter what they get you stuck on, unless your line fails you, or your rod fails you, that fish is not getting off. And yeah, he stinking not getting off at all. Let's get ourselves pliers. There we go. Awesome. We're not going to weigh a fish unless they're around three pounds. Because I can just guess. I can guess what our five fish limit would be if we don't weigh all those two and a half pounders. Stinking fun. Let's get ourselves a new trailer. Fix our skirt. How's the chest mount doing? We're doing good. I love it. I keep saying that I gotta re-spool, but I really have to re-spool now. This is starting to get drastic. We're losing a lot of line here. But the good thing is it's only 40 yards. Again, if y'all have not watched my how to skip video, I'm pretty proud of that video. The way that I taught the information I put in there. I will make another one this fall though, just with updated information, uh, you know, different way of teaching. But I'm definitely proud of how that one was made. I like swimming a jig on the backside in the shade. Just because I, I feel like one of these times a fish will come out to eat it. They never have. I wouldn't say never. They rarely have. But I feel like at some point they will. Is my wife texting me? No. She has not. There's one. Yes, sir. Didn't even need to reel up to check. I felt the thud. Yes, sir. We have found a loaded group of docks. And look at the chunkiness of this guy. Y'all look at this. That guy's fat. Wow. We like the proportions. You look like my Sherlunker if she had a baby. Which she did have babies, by the way. Oh, battery's dying. Let me get a new battery. Uh, I am proud to say that I am part of the Texas Sherlunker program and I helped make fishing better for every Texan and people who visit. So if you missed the interview I did with the Texas Fisheries Department, I'll leave that link in the video description as well. I just love the fact that I got to, first off, just be blessed enough to catch a fish like that and then use the fish's genetics to more than likely have a successful spawn and have more future giant Texas bass babies. So that's what I'm excited about. Again, how can I not get a second bass on this dock? Doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, that was a fish, but it was teeny, teeny weeny. It was teeny and the weeny. There's definitely a huge difference in where the shade is. It's crazy. The shade is like five feet to the right of the dock now at this point. Ooh, and it is, it is shallow here. Get to trim up a little bit. Yeah, these next docks, or this next dock at least, is not a jig dock. It's a frog dock. I can even get a frog in there without oh my gosh Tyler you're so bad you're so bad at this all right oh beautiful yes 
Oh, man. Oh, the most beautiful cast in the world. And there was a fish there. Should I go back with a jig? Probably. Do I want to? No. I want to catch him on the frog. I want to catch him on the frog. I want to catch him on the frog. One more try. Oh, two more tries. Here we go. Eat it. Eat it again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. That's stinking fun. Oh, that's stinking fun. Yes. Ha ha ha. Old pad perch action. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Whoa. Like I'm carrying the baby Jesus over here. Walking on water. That's what I was trying to show you right there. Frog is gone. Frog is gone down the throat. That's fun. See that dock over there had too much vegetation around the uh, around the cable. Couldn't get a jig in there probably without getting some grass on it. So a frog was the way to go. Awesome. Yeehaw, baby. There ain't nothing like that. That's fun. That is fun, fun, fun until your daddy takes the T-bird away. Oof. Let's just see if there's a second one in there. I doubt it. That'd be cool if my first double on a dock today is on a frog. Oh my gosh. He is there. There's two there. There is two there. Man, had a second one eat on the dock, on the, on the frog. Got him, yes sir, yes sir. Went back in with the jig, ha ha ha. You are not very big, you are not big at all. Oh man, another eye issue bass. These bass have some sort of weird eye disease going on. Okay, my first double of the day. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Ah, oh, gets me excited. I just love skipping docks up here. There ain't nothing like it. I know that there's not, you know, six pounders. I'm not, I'm not flipping up a casual eight like I did this spawn, but to me, this is so much fun. Because I get to come up here. I'm not sweating my butt off. I'm enjoying the nice weather. And I get to catch a bunch of fish the way that I want to catch them. And that means something to me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Another thing on this dock here, some, so some have water spout that's, you know, moving water around so weeds can't grow. Other dogs have a, other dogs have a weed roller, which is basically like a, a pipe on the bottom that goes left and right, left and right, that eliminates weeds from growing there. I've caught a whole lot more fish around the, the water pipes than I have the weed roller. That's for sure. Matter of fact, if I say weed roller one more time, YouTube's probably gonna demonetize me. Ah, bad skip. You can't start a skip this far back. I know I said that's my style, but that's not. There we go, that's what I wanted. Yes, sir. Yes. Wow. What a jumper. What a jump shot right there, man. Call this bass Steph Curry the way he jumps. <sighs> so much fun. I'm surprised why we haven't caught any more big ones, though. Like, I like catching two pounders, but I do want a three plus. Maybe a four plus. Maybe a five plus. Not to get greedy or anything, but. Can I please have one? And if you're if you are a dock skipper in Minnesota and you are not fishing the ends of the dock that have a chain on them, I don't know what you're doing. That chain part is the juice. Why can't the power pole go up? Thank you. Got 
Got some weeds on my trolling motor. Got some weeds on my motor and I got stuck on the dock. I think it's on somebody's rope too, which is unfortunate. I don't like ropes. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm definitely on a rope. I'm definitely on a rope. So we're gonna power pull down, bring my scissors. I'm gonna hop on their dock for just a second here. I'm not gonna cut their rope. I'm just gonna cut my lure free from their rope. Got it. Oh gosh. And my boat is drifting away. And my boat's drifting. My boat is drifting. Because my power pole didn't go down. Dang it. Can I get this back, please? Oh gosh. Oh no. My power pole didn't go down. I don't know why. That one's been having an issue today. We're good though. That just means that I can rotate the boat. Hey, how about that? How about that? Hey, no problem. No problem I can't handle. Now in this process, I did lose my claws. So, time to get new ones. Dun, 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 dun. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got grass. You know what? We got a lot of grass. So I'm thinking those two docks over there probably also have grass on them. Maybe those docks are better. I don't know. Let me just fish these two real quick. This is definitely a frog dock, but I already got the jig in my hand. Ah, a bad cast. What a bad two casts. Come on, Tyler, let's get a good third one. There we go. Got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, man. What a nice one. What a nice one. In the grass. In the grass. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, this is fun. I'm never going to complain ever one time about my job because I get to come out here and catch two and a half pounders on a jig. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Okay. Second one on this dock, maybe? Hey, how about that? You know what, I've been really impressed so far with my, this new Team Lose Signature Series 6.9 Heavy. Didn't know if I'd like a rod this short, but I really like the accuracy that I can have with it. And yeah, I wish it was a little bit heavier, I wish it was an extra heavy. But it might need that tip to get around. Oh, I thought this was a real swan. I said, uh-oh, because I saw this swan. I thought it was real. Oh my gosh. I was like, shoot, we got a swan coming right towards us. But it was fake, so we're good. Swans are bad news, man. You ever been around a swan? They are definite bad news. They think that my engine is a black swan. They're very racist. Gosh, what do I have here? What do I have here? What is this? A pumpkin seed. Hey, look at that. Beautiful. Maybe you're what's been chewing on my trailers. Stealing my claws. How about that? It was you guys the whole time. Your little sneakers. See, that, that skip right there was going in. It was going in the basket. 
and a piece of grass right before the dock started messed it up. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so accurate with this rod. It's crazy. I'm fitting it in like little one foot segments, little one foot openings. Last cast on these docks right here. And then I'm gonna go those docks over there, I think. They shouldn't have the wind on them today. Yeah, they don't. Oh, there's just so many good looking holes to flip a to flip a punch rig or a creature bait in. I just don't think they're I don't think they're there. I don't know, it's just the feeling I get. The shallow bite gets worse and worse as the day progresses for me. I think it's because the, the sun angle gets gets lower. The bass start moving out to deeper water because it's harder to find shade somewhere. At least that's my perception of it. What a good stretch of docks. How much time we got left? On the run over, I set a timer. We've got 48 minutes left on this timer until we are done. I get the weeds off, trolling motor. Ah, they're not coming off. This has not been a half bad time. Let me tell you, I've enjoyed myself here. But it is getting hot. The sun is going down a little bit every few minutes. And so that was a dumb statement. The sun's going down a little bit every few minutes. Of course it is. You got it. First dock. First dock. Boom, baby. Power pull down. All right. We are, we are cursed with the one and a half to two and a half pounders. Oh no. Fun for y'all to watch. That's for sure. I bet you don't mind that. Creaky power pole. Uh oh. Another small fish was just chomping on me. That's a good left handed skip. How about that? Okay, just one. Cool. Why not, baby? Beautiful. Beautiful skip. Beautiful skip. Oh, little guy. Little guy stole my claws, but I'm going to go back. Oh, I'm going to go back in there. See if I can at least redeem myself. Nope. Probably a bluegill. Probably a gill. Gotta love the gill. And if you're curious how I rig my trailers, I've got a whole video on jig trailers, vibrating jig trailers, swim jig trailers, skipping, flipping, and how you rig them for different situations. I will leave that link below as well. Really, when I'm you know doing these uncuts, I know I don't have a whole lot of time. I say I don't have a whole lot of time. I'm not really like doing a seminar like I am in a normal master class type video. So I may not have the best tips. They may just kind of be off the dome, but I have videos that have the best tips. So if you want to learn about the technique I'm doing, if I'm confident enough filming an uncut about it, more than likely I've made a video about it. An instructional video, that is. So dock skipping, fishing a jig. I've made videos about all of them things. Uh, that's too far. I don't have enough line for that. That's a funny, funny thing to have to think about. It's like, oh, I can't make that cast. I don't have enough line. I'm a real. Ah. Left hand? Yes. Beautiful. Nothing there. Nothing there either.
See, and these docks over here have all the shade on the left side. Because I'm on a different side of the lake. A very bright side, I can tell from the, the lighting of my camera. Oops. There's just a lot of these uh, docks that really aren't worth a whole bunch of time. Like this one here, I just, I don't see myself ever catching a four pounder out of it. There's no real juicy reason for a fish to be there. When you're dock skipping, you gotta find differences. That's why, that's really what I'm talking about. When I talk about the, you know, the parts where the shade meets the, the thickest cover, that's really just a difference. Oh, dang it. Powerful. Okay. Guys, oh, clank. That's probably the loudest clank we've had on the uncut so far. It wasn't on a boat, don't worry. It was on a, a dock post. We're okay. Although I don't know if we would have been okay if we did that to the angry person's dock. I wonder if that was the same exact dock. Now that I'm looking back on it, that might be the same exact angry person from two years ago that I showed the clip of. I'd know by now, now that I've edited the footage and the videos on the tubes. Uh-oh. Uh, never mind. Felt good. Okay. Man, we have a lot of shallow docks right here. I'm gonna fish like three more. And if I don't get a fish, I'm, I'm jetting. I'm pulling the jet. Cause I don't really like, I was gonna say I don't like the look of it. I still don't like the look of it. That, that fish didn't feel big. I felt like a bluegill. There's one. Yes, sir. Little guy. Little squirt. Ouch, ouch, ouch. My own hook got me. Chill, chill. Thank you, friend. Ooh, line's frayed. I know I told myself after the last one I'd, I'd retie, but I think we can keep going. I'm only losing a foot, so I think we're okay. Yeah, we're good. Hey, look at that. I, I kept both of my claws after that fish. And that right there is how fast I can retie with the Palomar. I don't see the reason for any other knot, to be honest. All right, let's see, what do we do in Uncuts? Uh, we do updates. We do life updates. I'm in Minnesota still, as you can tell. Hannah was with me for three weeks. My wife and I, Hannah, we traveled together for the, f not for the first time, you know, we were married, so we traveled, but we've never really traveled for business for this long together for YouTube. So we had a little vacation, a little filming in Wisconsin, which the videos are all out by now. And then we had a week or nine days together here in Minnesota. And it was really fun. We had a good time. I'm, I'm really grateful she was able to come with me and I look forward to her coming back up in September. So when these videos are coming out, she's probably back up here with me. Um, but I'm gonna take a little, a little vacation with her after a few hard weeks of filming here and on the Bass Pro Tour. So we're going to Cancun in Mexico, Excellence Playa Mujeres, a resort down there. So I'm, we're pumped about that. Um, hold up here. Had to get a beautiful skip in there. And then we got a wedding to attend. We got a graduation to attend, but we're really enjoying working together. You know, we heard horror stories from people. Oh, you're, you're not gonna like working with your spouse just because, you know, two competing people, you know, when you're married, you can't work together. And I just, maybe that's true for some couples, but for us, it's worked out great. I think it's nice that we can survive well without her income. 
And so I don't really feel a whole lot of pressure for her to like, you know, produce, or like be a good employee. Just her helping out in any way she can is really great. And she's been eager to help. Every single thumbnail for the past three months has been designed by her. And I think they've been pretty dang good. I've been impressed with some of her, her knowledge and skills. She knew nothing about Photoshop. And so she's really, really taken it to heart. I've been proud of her for that. Let's see. Okay, one more dock. And then we're getting at you here. Got about 30 minutes left. So that's the update. There's TRF and Hannah Anderson life update. Super grateful for you guys as always. Again, you guys are the reason why she could quit her job and work for me. Dream scenario. So we're really, really blessed. Oh, that's a fish, but that's really risky. I don't feel like going there. Okay, we're done with these ducks. I'm not feeling bueno about them. So in fishing, when you're not feeling good about something, you gotta go, you gotta get your booty out of there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my booty out of here. Um, just a few minutes left on our timer. Seems that every time I stop on a new dock stretch, I catch one on the first dock, so I expect to get one here. Maybe not, though. Probably a bad dock to start on. It's very small, doesn't have much shade. This one is big and has lots of shade. It's throwing shade all over the place. You know what? I'm not even going to work on this side of the dock. It's too sunny. I'm going to really focus on the left side of the dock since that's the direction I'm heading. That's the direction the sun's going. Sorry. There he is. Oh, wow. That guy fought back a little bit. You bigger? You bigger? No, you're not. You're just really, really stinking strong. Get in here. Yes, sir. Really strong bass. Love it. Oh my gosh, and we are so blown out in the background. I apologize, folks. That's just what happens when it's so, so bright outside. I'll underexpose us a little bit. Going forward. I just, see, I don't want it to be, I don't want the clip to be dark. But I also don't want to be just totally blown out. It's really hard to film this time of the day unless you have a, a second camera shooting this way. But I have to deal with whatever the, uh, the day provides. Whatever the Lord has in store is what I get to film. And if he's got sun coming from the direction I'm going, then that stinks. One thing I am really grateful of is that when I caught my 14, we had a north wind and I caught it in the morning. So the sun, the way it was rising that day was actually uh, behind me. Yeah, the sun was behind the camera. And so I was perfectly lit. There was no sun glare. That was a big, big blessing. Not to say the video wouldn't have gotten as many views, you know, if I had... Uh, if I had a different situation, but I'm just a big lighting guy and I'm grateful that I had primo lighting for that. I still wish it was overcast and not <laughs> sunny. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, bad cast. Bad cast, Tyler. Ugh. No, we have a perfect opportunity here with a chain. I cannot skip a tube. I cannot flip a tube either. I can't. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was a mess. Okay. The tube is so hard to skip because it's so light. I just don't want to wreck this dog. 
pan. Okay. Let's go back and get my jig. All it does is get wedged. Not really even stuck. Just wedged. I would say the stealth fighter has done a good job. Again, I'd prefer to have the cage because of that horizontal line tie, but I think I've been pretty good at getting my jig in the right place to not get stuck. What time is it? 5.13, we got 22 minutes left on our timer. Okie doke. We can fish all these docks right here, I think in 22 minutes. That's what I think. One thing I've always been really, I would say impressed, surprised with in Minnesota is the lack of pike on docks. Now, I don't know if I'm just like, if pike aren't jig fish, but I, I've, I've caught plenty of pike on jigs. So. You know what, I can debunk that myself. But they've been like open water grass pike. I don't know if many pike live around docks and if they do, gosh. You know what, there was a fish right there, but also I don't want to get too close to this chain right here. Because I know that chains have them too, man. Okay, there's a fish here in this chain. And there's a fish back there. There's two of them. Let's catch them both. Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Okay, that one is not there anymore. Let's go back here. Catch this fish. Or, hear me out here, I catch zero of them. Because that's how that works, isn't it? I catch neither one of the bite that I just got. Oh man, these must be bluegill. Gosh, bug. Oh man, broke me off. Still felt small. Oh well, what was that? Camera could tell, although it got really dark just now. Uh, new jig, Need a new jig days like this that I'm very glad that I get free jigs because <laughs> I lost a lot of jigs today this is a fun tactic for sure but gets expensive if you really get your lure where it belongs I guess I could throw it on braid of course and not break off as much I could throw 25 pound I just like how castable 20 pound is I like how many bites it gets I don't really want to throw a lighter or heavier line. But maybe I should. Maybe I should. I really want a frog dock. It's been a while since I've had a frog dock. A nice grassy dock that I can first throw a frog. You know, this, this next one might be a frog dock. I'm gonna get prepared like it is. Oh, it's a chain dock, but we'll see. Dog, dog, dog. There we go. That's the one right there. Nothing on the frog. Nothing on the jig either. Ooh, there's a secondary chain back there though. That looks really good for a frog. Yeah, there's no bass there. He would have eaten that. He for sure would have eaten that.
Beautiful skip. That's going to be a fish. That's going to be a fish. Where's the thump? Where's the thump? There it is. Oh my gosh, he came off. He came off. Come on now. Come back for it, buddy. Come on. Baby, come back. You can blame it on me. I was wrong. Oh. Man. Wait. There's one. Ah, bad hook set. He was in between all sorts of things and I just couldn't get him out. Line's fine. <laughs> On me, I was wrong. And I just can't live without you. All right, we got a, we got a frog dock here for sure. I just, it's too froggy. There's like too much. Too much green. Can't even get under there. Like no dock to skip. I guess there kind of is. Oh gosh. Not the best, not the best. Oh, come on, Tyler. You goof. Oh man, I can't do this. I'm losing it. I'm losing my mojo here. There we go. We got two chains here on some pads. Ooh, yes, finally, a good skip with the frog. And if there was one there, he would have eaten it. So I can rest, I can rest easy knowing that there was no fish there. And to anybody mad that I've hit a few pontoon boats with a frog, it's gonna be okay. They get hit by much worse. They get hit by rocks. Their grand grandkid throwing a baseball. It's just a soft body frog. It is A-OK. -okay. Hope you all have enjoyed this video so far. Smash that like button. One thing that y'all may not know is that YouTube does value the like button. They value the comments. And I know y'all are here by those baitcaster videos I did a few weeks ago or by this point, maybe a few months ago. I know y'all are here. So if you enjoy the video, or if you got a comment, whatever, drop it down below because it helps the channel grow just by commenting anything. So you know what? I forgot. During these uncuts, I have a challenge, comment challenge. Today, you're gonna comment your favorite animated movie. I know some of you guys might not be animated movie fans. I'm not the biggest animated movie fan, but that will be today's comment challenge. Drop it below. Mine. <sighs> Animated movie. I mean, Finding Nemo is a really, really good one in my mind. Not just because I'm a fisherman. I just really like the storyline. I think it's great. As a kid, I was scared of that barracuda. That was eating Nemo's parents. Mm. How dare he? Yeah, I'd say Finding Nemo, probably my favorite. Comment below what yours is. Is there gonna be a fish under there though? That's the problem. None of these docks have clearings under them. So it's very difficult to actually get a good retrieve back. It's almost like the fish has got to eat it on the drop. Don't. Oh. Skips are getting good though. We've come a long way from the beginning of the uncut. I was messing up every two or three skips. Now I can basically skip with my eyes closed. Oh, dang. It's 
so much grass in this dock. Man. Why? Why are they that way? Practice? You know I'm talking about practice? The playoffs. There's one, and you are a small little squirt, so I don't mind if he got off. But maybe he's got a bigger squirt. That's his friend. Maybe not. Really would like to end the big fish. I just think that these fish are getting slightly worse. The bite's getting worse. And the prime time dock weather is like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., 3 p.m. We're already into like 6 o'clock, 5.30? Yeah. We are past prime frogging right now. Oh, no. Yeah. Don't set the hook into a cable. Whoa. Whoa. So I've ruined this part of the dock. How about this part over here? That ruined? Probably. See, at this point, I'm just going like scorched earth policy. If I don't get a bite in two seconds, it is forget about this dock. <laughs> I'm just trying to catch a fish. That's all I'm trying to do. And I think the five pounders are not here. Heck, even the four pounders. Where are they? My skip is here though. My skip. My gosh darn it, skip. No, oh, no. That was not gonna be good. I don't think I'm gonna catch one here. I'm just not feeling. Nope. Yeah, I can't decide if this area is just not as good or if there's uh, the fish are leaving the bank. I think that's the case. Seems like in, in the summer, everywhere else in the country, the fish are on the bank in the morning and in the evening and out deep during the middle of the day. It seems like here in Minnesota, it's flip flopped. The deep bite is killer <laughs> in the morning in the evening and the fish are shallow in the heat of the day. Just a very interesting dichotomy there. Look at me using big words. Big words for my vocabulary. Yep, we got two, two and a half minutes. We can do the rest of these docks and that's it. Beautiful. Come on. Man, oh man. Frustrating. Frustrating how there should be bass here. I really found my touch with the jig. And now they're not eating it. Oh man, oh man. A few more casts until the timer expires on the frog. Over some real shallow type stuff. Oh, and the wind picked up. Hello.
We got some cheese on the edge of this reed line. Come on now. Hey, there's the timer. That right there, folks, brings an end to our uncut. Let's go sit down in the shade so we can get some better lighting. Now, just like I predicted, that was a whole lot of stinking fun. I don't know how many fish I caught, probably 12, 15, 20, whatever it was. I had a blast. I truly love catching bass in any place, in any way possible, but skipping docks is one of my favorites. And my combo today was the Luz Pro SP, the new uh, Signature Series Skipping Rod. It is a 6'9 heavy, fast action rod. I think it's Andy Montgomery's, yep, Mr. Montgomery's Signature Skipping Rod. And then I've got the Outcast Tackle. I had the uh, Cage Fighter and then the Stealth Fighter. They both work fine, but I think the cage gets stuck a little bit less. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button and and of course, I will leave two videos up here in the corners for y'all to click on and watch because the longer you stay on my channel, the better it does. I will leave my kayak uncut that I did recently right over there. And I will leave, I don't know, let's, let's go with a, uh, a fall uncut from last year, early fall, because I assume some of you guys are going to be watching this video as it's getting to early fall. I will leave that uncut right here in this corner. As always, it is a pleasure to teach you guys how to catch more fish and catch fish myself. I'm so grateful for this platform and for the fact that you guys allow me to have a job. And if I can ever do anything for you guys, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you next time right here on TRF.